The simplest of all the regression models is the simple linear regression model. And before talking of all, such a model and its implications, we need to clearly understand what the word regression means. So, the term regression was given by the British anthropologist Sir Francis Galton when he was conducting a research on the height of parents and their progeny. So, in the experiment, he noticed the tendency of heights of wards to settle at average values. Hence, he termed regression as stepping back towards the average. Now, if we see the scatter plot, we note that there is a range of height of sons to corresponding to a specific height of father, which eventually settles down at the average values. The line connecting, the line connecting these average values is what we call as the regression line. We notice that corresponding to every father's height, there are multiple height of the children. And so, uh, and in a, uh, overall, we note that the height of a child whose father is tall will on the average be taller than the height of a child whose father is not so tall. So the regression line convinces us uh, on this argument. But what we note down is corresponding to every height, there are multiple observations and these observations somehow tend to settle down around the average value. So it might happen that the taller father may have the son's height to be shorter than what his expectation would be. So the expectation of a tall father, let's say 70 inches tall, could be somewhere around here, but the height of the son settles down at the average value. But what we note is that this average value of a tall father will definitely be higher than this average value of perhaps a not so tall father. So, the you know the, the classical definition was that the regression is uh, is uh, stepping back towards origin or stepping back towards the average values. However, the modern definition is different. So here we are not interested in the stability in the distribution of heights or in the distribution of the variables involved in the analysis. Rather, we are interested in finding out how the average height of son changes given the father's height. That is, predicting the son's height when the father's height is given to us. So we are trying to establish some kind of a cause and effect relationship. Because father's height is this much, son's height would have to be different. Now the following table gives uh, or highlights the differences between the two related but completely different terms, the correlation and the regression. Now, what is more important to note is that the regression identifies or looks for a cause and effect relationship between variables, while correlation just speaks about variables moving simultaneously, whether in the same direction or in the opposite direction without any reference. So correlation doesn't talk about what is the cause and what is effect. So what is the uh, what is causing another variable to exhibit certain tendencies. Now a word of caution here, right? When, when I'm talking about cause and effect uh, relationship being established by regression models, we have to be cautious because the statistical relationship itself doesn't imply causation until and unless the variables involved in such relationship appear to logically imply that. So there are instances where there exists relationship between two variables which logically or intuitively cannot uh, be related at all. So in that sense, we talk about spurious regression or nonsense regression. Okay? So now this is your population regression function where you think of a phenomenon Y and identify a reason X for this phenomenon to be happening. So I can think about any phenomenon, you know, let it be 
you know let's say in as in the previous example it could be the ctcbrt score and i could identify the age being a determining factor for a particular ctcbrt score and since this y cannot be determined by x alone therefore we keep all the other things in the term which we call as the error or the stochastic component now this stochastic component is what defines a statistical model and what differentiates a statistical model from a mathematical model if this u term wasn't there then it would have been a completely deterministic model so it would have become a mathematical model so the presence of u makes it appear makes it a statistical model now this stochastic term may refer to many things for example it could talk about exclusion of variables it could talk about misspecification of the functional form it could talk about poor proxy variables it could talk about uncontrollable factors etc etc so there are so many things that this you can speak about so what we need to understand here is that y is the phenomenon that we are trying to explain and x is the factor which is trying to explain the variation in y and they are bound by this linear relationship and in the linear relationship there are pa parameters like beta naught and beta 1 which are unknown to us of course nothing here is known to us we don't know why we don't know beta naught beta 1 x u we just imagine that y is certain variable x is may be explaining the variation in y and therefore we make this kind of a model and what is more important here is that this model should be linear and when we talk about linearity as we'll see later on linearity here emphasizes linearity in terms of the parameters beta naught and beta 1 as an example let's say we talk about you know a, a, a simple uh, a stick being measured by a, a person at the cloth store to uh, to measure a one meter kind of a cloth so let y be the difference between what that ad hoc stick measures and what a standard stick standard device measures so obviously there will be variation between what your standard device measures and and what that ad hoc measure ad hoc stick that this uh, store owner has is measuring so i am saying that there is difference and let y denote that kind of a difference now the question is what does this difference depend upon if the difference is large then of course the cloth store owner is maybe fleecing you if the differences are small then maybe you know that person is right righteous enough to give you the actual uh, uh, measurement of cloth that you are actually buying so what does this difference depend upon so the difference may depend upon maybe the age of the person who is doing these measurements maybe uh, you know and and uh, a very old person may be having some issues with measuring properly and therefore the measurements may not be right so and x could be something else as well so therefore x is something which identifies the which tries to relate to the changes in y and there may be several other factors which can be now put in this error term now when we talk about the unpredictable nature of this error term we are left with no option but to make reason uh, make assumptions on that unpredictable term and when we talk about such assumptions the assumption should be reasonable enough to be uh, true most of the times so these are the list of assumptions and uh, the comprehensive list of assumptions the first assumption is the model is linear in terms of parameters and when we talk about parameters we are talking about beta naught and beta 1 secondly we expect the random component u to be zero over all the observations we'll see this uh, in, in the next slide what these assumptions mean the third assumption is the assumption of homoscedasticity or homogeneous variances that means the variance of this u term is a constant we denote this by let's say sigma square and the covariance between the errors is zero the x values are fixed in repeated sampling that means if we take different different samples we assume the x values to be fixed as in the case of this example the x value here is the father's height so 60 is fixed and we'll have multiple y values so we assume that 
value of x is fixed over repeated observations. And then we'll have that the covariance between the error term and the x variable is 0. u follows a normal distribution. That's a reasonable assumption because we, uh, since it's normal, so obviously everything tends to be normal. Number of observations must be greater than number of parameters. Now that's the principle that we'll be using to estimate the parameters. Now when we are understanding the assumptions 2 and 3, so we the, the graph somehow illustrates such assumptions. So we know that corresponding to every xi there will be multiple y values. So this uh, highlighted dot is the mean value. We can notice that we can see that or we can reasonably assume that the number of points below the mean value are more or less similar to the number of points above the mean value and if we sum up all these ui values it will eventually come out to be zero the second assumption the third assumption that the variances are constant emanates from such a representation so this was a two-dimensional plot here i have a three-dimensional plot uh, i have x on the x-axis y on the y-axis and the probability density of the error term on the z-axis so we see that the shape of each of these normal curves corresponding to every xi and yi is similar. The height, the spread of this normal curve is similar and therefore we can assume that the variances are constant. And also whenever we have a cross-sectional kind of a data, the fourth assumption that errors of maybe one observation are uncorrelated with errors of the second observation, a very reasonable assumption to make. So this is the sample regression function. What we need to note here is that everything is unknown. So we have y which can have almost infinite observations in this universe. We have x which again can have infinite observations. We have beta naught and beta 1 which uh, we are imagining to be binding these variables y and x and there are there is a random component u which accounts for all the un unaccounted terms. So everything is unknown. So we evolve some kind of a procedure to estimate things which are known to us uh, uh, by which these unknown things may be made known to us. So that estimation procedure we'll talk about subsequently but the, the gist is that Whenever we have a population which comprises of things which are unknown and to obtain an estima, estimate or the idea of those unknown terms, what we do is we collect, we select a sample and this sample is different for different people who are conducting these analysis. So let's say I select a sample and on the base of that sample, I obtain observations on y and x. Let's say I obtain n observations on y and x. So using these n observations and some criterion, some procedure, I estimate, I obtain B0 and B1. So B0 and B1 are nothing but supposedly the estimates of the regression coefficients beta0 and beta1. So these beta0 and beta1 were unknown to me and therefore this provides the estimates of the regression coefficients beta0 and beta1. And similarly E provides the estimate of the unknown error term u. Please note here that when, when somebody asks us how many unknowns are there in this model, so the actual number of unknowns is uh, 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 your beta naught, your beta 1, your u and your sigma square. This is also unknown to us. So your beta naught and beta 1 are estimated using b naught and b1. The error component u is estimated using e or we could write this same sample regression function in terms of the fitted regression equation like this. So the residual, if the residual is removed, we have this as the fitted regression equation. There will be different kinds of equation that you will encounter. So briefly, the, 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 the equations on your screen are one and the same. The, the first equation talks about representing the original y value in terms of the estimated values and the residual. The second equation represents the fitted y values in terms of the estimated values. Right? So in order to understand, so let's understand this in uh, with much more clarity. So we have this bold line, which is nothing but the population regression function. And this is unknown to us. The bold line is unknown to us. We can only imagine that there is a line which 
which uh, is similar which is something like this right so let's say i have three analysts the three analysts take three different samples their sizes their sample observations everything may be different so the first analyst talks about uh, uh, talks about estimating the parameters and comes up with the first regression line let's say this the second analyst comes up with this regression the third line the third analyst comes up so every person who is doing the analysis comes up with their own line of regression but what we need to what we need to understand here is that these lines of regression may or may not be coinciding with the true regression function but since we don't know what the true regression function is we have to live with these lines of regression and so therefore the estimation of this beta naught and beta 1 is the most important uh, uh, task that we have at our head so these b naught and b1 which are supposedly the estimates of this beta naught and beta 1 should be found in such a way that these lines are not too much away from the actual regression line so that procedure we'll see later on is nothing but the principle of least squares and uh, 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 more detail about the differences in the various terms so we have this as the population regression function this as the sample regression function so on a scatter plot we try to fit a straight line passing through as many points as possible so the bold line is something which is unknown to us this is an imaginary fictitious kind of a line and the dotted line is what we get from the sample at hand so if i am talking about this particular observation the deviation of this observation from the imaginary line is nothing but ui and since this line is imaginary i am unable to know what ui is so that's what your population regression function is nor do i know the slope and intercept of this line however the deviation of this point from the line that i have fitted the dotted line the fitted on the basis of these beta naught and uh, b naught and b1 estimates is nothing but your residual and we have this actual point which is a part of our data set we have this fitted point which we can always derive from this line so residual is nothing but the deviation of the actual point from the fitted point here so that's the difference between these two observations so these are the different set of regression equations that we have encountered in in this uh, small uh, uh, in, in the sequence of slides so this is your population regression function everything is unknown this is the sample regression function so if we, we collect a data and on the base of data we estimate what this b naught and b1 would be so this is the sample regression function if we talk about fitted equation y cap is nothing but the part of the sample regression function the error from the population regression function is nothing but y minus beta naught minus beta 1x this is unknown to us the residual from the sample regression function is y minus y cap which is this which is known to us so that's the gist of the slides that